Right Network. Mobilizing, countering the left, energizing the right. New Right Network, home of the New Right Movement. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to New Right Network's original series, Smith TV. Your host, Brian Smith. Giving you all the breaking news of the day, wrapping it all up, making sense of it all, exposing the fake news, and giving you the real news every single night, Monday to Friday, 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern, and right after this show is a Wayne Dupree show. So you've got two hours of back-to-back, non-stop news and information, exposing fake news, and putting on the Democrats' on display as the propagandist outfit that they are in complete and utter turmoil. Well, we got a lot of that going on, guys. Uh, and down in the description of below, there's a few links down there. There's one if you want to listen to the show uh, audio only. We're on iHeartRadio. And also, if you're shadow banned like a, a whole bunch of us are, uh, grab the app, the Telegram app, and, and you can get us live every single night on the Telegram app. It's like uh, kind of like a text message, but you only get one message every single day, and that's when the show uh, links are put up and the show is live, so you'll get all the information and never miss a single beat, as well as never missing the full show notes. You want to have the full show notes uh, in the description below. There's the link. So take that link and share that with your friends and your family because that link will take you over to newrightnetwork.com. Uh, usually about two to three pages of show notes will be there, as well as the embed video for the show so that they can follow right along with all these great patriots on Twitter, uh, the links to all the different articles that we have. And if you're trying to build up your Twitter following, I suggest following all these folks that are uh, there in the show notes on the show that we display here. Uh, because a lot of them will follow you back. I promise you that. And something else, we cannot continue this show Monday through Friday like we do, uh, getting the real news out without your help. And we appreciate all the Patreons that have been with us for years and some of the new Patreons that have jumped over right now. Much appreciated. Thank you very, very much. Uh, jump over there down in the description, patreon.com slash Smith Radio. When we used to be audio only, uh, it's still good. And if you don't like the Patreon, that's all right. Uh, there's paypal.com, the, the, the PayPal me as well as the cash me. Uh, so definitely jump over there. Help us continue to get the real news out, exposing the fake news. And, and we put Donald Trump on display here, guys. All the tweets that he tweets out, they're here in the show. Uh, so when people say, oh, man, I'm just tired of the president tweeting. No, you'll know why that you're not tired of it tweeting. And we're not tired of winning either. And Donald Trump tells us all about that. So uh, if anybody ever says, I'm tired of the president tweeting out, you tell them, you say, you're probably not on Twitter then. You're probably not following them uh, because you definitely need to get the tweets. Uh, according to the title today, we're going to talk a little bit about Epstein and what happened overnight. Breaking news. Something uh, something big happened. We'll get into that. And then we've got a lot of the Mueller fallout. I played yesterday a majority of, well, it was four hours long and I condensed it down to 45 minutes that we played yesterday of some of the great Republicans that just took uh, Mueller to task. And yes, I know I've got a lot of a lot of friends that said, man, I felt so bad for Mueller. Well, he's been a deep stater for a long, long time, and it's his own fault. He agreed to do that. I, I don't have any sympathy for him because of what he has taken this country through for the last 22 months and almost $30 million uh, wreaking havoc over this country and making us an embarrassment to the world. I don't feel uh, uh, an ounce bad for him, uh, but we've got a lot of the full fallout, and we'll get into some of that stuff, as well as the Democrat crisis. The Democrat Party is in complete shambles and total crisis, and now we've got, guys, we've got it. The black conservative movement is making huge head waves. Uh, social media and putting up uh, real news and real information and, and explaining why they're walking away for the, from the Democrat Party. And, and again, we've got a lot of videos everywhere over social media. Black Americans wearing the, the good old uh, MAGA hat and uh, walking outside. A lot of them, let's well, see, if you walk outside New York or Chicago, you're going to catch some heat, but definitely stand up for yourself. West side of Cincinnati, 
No, not so much so. I, I usually get thumbs up and attaboy, like your shirt, like your hat. But uh, but these folks, they live in some of these rough areas in Chicago, New York, California, and uh, and they fight back with words, uh, not not physically, but with words. And, and that's what we've got to continue to keep doing is continue to verbally, verbally, not physically, but verbally stand up for ourselves and say, hey, we're not going to take this anymore, guys. Uh, no more racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe here. It is not uh, uh, going to be taken, and we're not going to be put up with. And then uh, lastly, at the end of the show, we've got uh, Google Bias Exposed. Uh, our good buddy James O'Keefe, the undercover Google exec has now come out. He's come out. He's been put on put on leave, but he's come out and he's explaining the bias. Uh, I got a doctorate degree, very articulate, intelligent guy explaining what is really going on with the big tech Googles and the algorithms. Um, it's not shocking, but it's good that it's out there. So at least uh, uh, Donald Trump and the administration can I can get their hands around it and possibly do something. Uh, American Priority Conference in Doral. Florida, the Trump Doral, uh, coming up here the Columbus weekend um, of October. Going to be really exciting. We're going to be talking about the uh, the Bill of Rights when it comes to the Internet, proposing that and talking about that. Uh, a lot of great speakers. Uh, Brandon's going to be there. Brandon Strzok's going to be there. Uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders is going to be there. A lot of great people are going to be there. It's going to be the who's who of the conservative party, the, the MAGA movement, the America first movement so i highly suggest to get your tickets early uh we'll have alex phillips on here probably sometime next week to talk more about the american priorities conference and give you guys more detail on what's to come uh, i'm gonna be there um, uh carrie will be there uh, it, it is really a big family and a who's 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 going to be there so definitely get your tickets and um as we start off the show guys oh my goodness overnight and i'm going to start off with this because i don't want to forget about it um, Jeffrey Epstein, obviously, he's been indicted, uh, arrested, uh, put in jail. He begged the judge, and his lawyers begged the judge to to let him out on bail so that he could uh, home arrest, so he could stay in a, a what is that, twenty thousand square foot home or some something crazy like that, big giant mansion. Uh, yeah, who wouldn't want to be there? And not only that, but if you've got the internet, you're not really in prison. You're not really being punished. So the judge said, "No way, Jose." I'm not letting you out of jail. I'm not letting you uh, uh, free. There's just no possible way. You've got way too. I, I'm some. I'm just surmising on what the judge said. You got way too much money, way too many connections. You know, way too many people. Possibly a former uh, CIA uh, operative. And yeah, no, sorry, you stand right here in jail. Now a lot of people think, uh, well, he's in jail, Brian, and so he's safe. Not necessarily. Um, so overnight, apparently, uh, Jeffrey Epstein, uh, the emergency to his cell, uh, he was laying down on the ground uh, in a fetal position, had bruises around his neck, choke marks, and people are reporting that it was possible suicide, and he's on suicide watch. Well, if you read all the articles and you get through the full article and you get to the right ones that tell you about his celly. What, Brian? Epstein's got a cellmate? Yeah, guys, this is very, very highly unusual, extremely unusual. When they asked the cellmate what happened, the cellmate said, I don't know, I just woke up and he was laying there on the ground. You got to believe the cellmate, right? Well, a little backstory on the cellmate. Who is this cellmate? Cellmate's a former cop. Well, why is that cop in prison? Well, the cop had uh, uh, killed four people that uh, had... uh, Tens of millions of dollars that the t- cop was going to receive and uh, cocaine, drug money, and stuff like that. And uh, he killed four people, took them out to wherever, and, and buried him. Shallow graves. Now that dirty cop is uh, spending life in prison. I mean, long time. So why is a con- – he's not convicted yet. He's going to court. And, and let me get this straight. I agree with you guys that Epstein is a dirty pedophile. I, I, I believe it. I, I see it. However, in America, everybody is given their due uh, rights to go to court, defend themselves. O.J. Simpson. Uh, <laughs> I mean, serious. You have your right to defend yourself. And I want Jeffrey Epstein to have the best, uh, most... Uh, uh, 
unmolested, uh, uh, don't try this in the public quarter of opinion, and I, I want this to be uh, silenced almost as much as they do in Britain, but, but have his day in court and let the jury come back within an hour and convict him on all charges of sitting present for the rest of his life. That's what I want, because that's a clear-cut shot. It's a done deal. Just like with Donald Trump and his re-election, 2020, it has to be. No cheating, no nothing on our part. It has to be an absolute landslide to shut the Democrats down and show them that there's no cheating, there's no nothing. This is the American people speaking. I know it's kind of an odd example to, to juxtapose those two, but my whole point is that I want it to be a slam dunk with Epstein. That he's guilty is all, all get out. So... Uh, What's going on with the possible suicide watch? Uh, guys, uh, hashtag Clinton body count is trending because we know what the Clintons are all about. Uh, a lot of circumstantial evidence, but uh, that the, uh, top politician that was coming from Haiti to testify against the Clintons, how they raped his country in Florida in a hotel, suicide. He was getting ready to testify. What about the former uh, president of the U.N. coming to America to testify against the Clintons and the uh, the, the Asian uh, guy that they were affiliated with, bringing hundreds of millions of dollars into the Clinton Foundation. Uh, reports on the ground were he had a, uh, a weightlifting accident. Barr fell on his throat and crushed his throat and he died. That was local cops. Uh, the higher up said, no, he had a heart attack. I said, too conflicting. He was getting ready to testify against the Clintons as well. Epstein. Uh it's rumored that possibly uh, he's going to cut a deal, get five years, and roll over on all these people. You're not safe in jail. You're actually worse off in jail. Epstein is worse off in jail because they can get to you. They know where you are, and they know how to get to you, uh, whether it be a, a dirty prison guards, whether it be a guys who are locked up, a dirty cop doing life in prison for killing four people. To the hell's he care? Kill more people. It don't matter to him. He'll get a sweetheart deal or something or other, uh, Democrats, and slip him some I don't know, cell phones or laptops and go easy on whatever the case may be. From my personal experience, if you are arrested, that you are in a cell by yourself and you wait trial unless you can get out. I knew a guy who uh, was accused of murder. He murdered a little girl. Um, it was in a complex that I lived in, apartment complex I lived in when I was a kid, uh, just 18, just out, outside the home. Uh, this guy was in his 30s. We both had motorcycles, so it was kind of like that one of those things that you just kind of ride together. Didn't really know the guy. He just moved in. He was involved with drugs and some other things having to do with another family in that town. And uh, the case went is that uh, he showed up the family's house to purchase some drugs uh, nobody was home except the 10-year-old little girl. He kidnapped the girl, did what he did with her, uh, killed her, and then threw her over the side of, of an embankment down a ravine and hid away. Long story short, he went to jail. He started trying to call people. And he was like, uh, hey, man, you got to help me. got to help me. I'm like, man, I ain't got to help you nothing. I, one, I don't know you. And two, you're running up my bill because call and collect. I think that... Five minute conversation, like fifty bucks. That was a lot of money back in the day, and so uh, he he was in a cell by himself, waiting trial, no bail, no nothing. Went to trial, convicted, and sentenced to life. Actually, he was sentenced to death. Oh, guys, and, and you know, fast forward all the way to about five years ago. Or, I mean, twenty twenty five years later, five years ago, something like that. Uh, someone come knocking on my door and asking about him. And I'm like, holy smoke, what a flashback from the past. Yeah, what do you want? She's like, well, uh, he's about ready to uh, get the death penalty, about ready to go to death. And uh, we just want to double check and double check everything all over again. So he was put death. Epstein needs his day in court. And we need to find out who's trying to kill him. Because that's your dirty dogs. That's the deep state. That's the people that we need to weed out. Those are the people that Donald Trump is trying to weed out. The deep state is working hard to get rid of Epstein. You got to kill this guy. That's I mean that's what they're saying. And so uh, we got to protect this guy at all costs. Uh, thank goodness he's in the hospital and possibly maybe maybe has a guard watching over him. 
But I, I don't know, guys. Epstein needs to be in solitary confinement until his day in court. Otherwise, he's going to wind up dead. Another Clinton body count. All right. Well, that being said, let's move on. Uh, let's talk about the uh, the uh, incredible stuff that Donald Trump's doing that nobody's talking about. Donald Trump tweeting this out as as the Mueller uh, thing was absolutely completely falling apart. And if you didn't see it and you just want to see the highlights, I su- highly suggest checking out last night's show. We we did the highlight reel of what went down, and it was just awesome, these great representatives. And now you know who to reelect in Congress. But this tweeted out by our president. Uh, that uh, That's beyond my purview. The most people working, almost 160 million, in the history of our country. We just got the biggest tax and regulation cuts in the history of our country. We have the highest stock market in the history of our country. We've created more than six million new jobs. And we're building a strong border against so much, you have no idea. We have the best and newest military that we've ever had, almost totally rebuilt from the depleted military that I inherited I've just signed the 124th federal district judge. So we have all of this, the best economy, best market, best military, best VA, best everything, and much, much more. And what was the question? Uh, I'm not going to speak to that. That's right, folks. 22 months later and $30 million. And what has Mueller done other than wreak havoc to this country? Juxtapose Donald Trump two and a half years. What has he done? Unbelievable things for our country, uh, uh, for the world, looking at us and, and seeing how strong of a powerhouse Donald Trump has rebuilt our military, has rebuilt our image in the world, standing up to Iran, not placating to these terrorists. Uh, standing up to North Korea and actually making a difference. The first president in the, uh, first president ever to cross over the DMZ into North Korea with Kim Jong Un. Promising, uh, 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 deals being, being talked about. I mean, it's just really good that Donald Trump is helping to create peace in the world and prosperity in America. Thank you, sir, for all that you do. And as we talk about uh, the, how it went down and how it fell apart yesterday was just absolutely insane with um, the Mueller investigation. And one of our great elected officials at Jim underscore Jordan, Bill Barr and John Durham investigation is already looking into Joseph Misford. They're going to get to the truth. This the hill.com. And if you're watching, Jim Jordan brought that up to him, uh, Miss Foot. Uh, guys, this is the originator of the entire Spygate spying on George Papadopoulos, uh, uh, spying on American citizens. And this is where it originated. This is who needs to be uh, uh, arrested for lying multiple times uh, under oath. This is the guy that, that should be brought to trial. And as Jim Jordan grilled Mueller and said, oh, so you can arrest all these other people on process charges on, uh, uh, you know, he said, she said, possible this, possible that. You can arrest them all that. But this guy clearly lied to you and he's not under arrest. We know why. Because it is all a farce. It was all part of the coup d'etat. It was all part of the attempted, okay, Donald Trump has now won the presidency, which we didn't think could possibly happen. Uh, you know, Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, we've got an insurance policy. Don't worry. Donald Trump wins. Uh, and then before, before he's the inauguration day, uh, January 20th, they're already starting to, uh, impeach him by working in the background creating the Russia, 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 uh, trying to set up uh, Comey involved, McCabe involved, Comey leaking, McCabe leaking, special counsel leaking, everybody leaking in order to change the narrative and literally try Donald Trump in the court of public opinion. How sad is that? We've got this propagandist. On display, and CNN, MSNBC have become an absolute uh, propagandist machine 
for the evil globalist, the socialist, the communist, uh, the Islamist, the Democrat Party, which has embraced all this evil. We have never seen such polar opposites of two parties in our entire lifetimes. And, and people say, oh, oh, yeah, the, the Republicans are turning more farther right and the, the Democrats are more farther. No, we ain't moved. We have not moved anywhere. The Democrats are on a, a rocket trajectory to the far fringes of the left. And we're calling it out every single day, guys. And I'm telling you, uh, we this whole thing yesterday was probably the best it could have happened for our country to see and watch as the Mueller uh, just completely disintegrated and crumbled. And this was brought up to uh, our good friend at Jelly underscore cat, Natalia Vishnaskaya, the Russian lawyer at the center of the Trump Tower meeting, got so much of her info from Fusion GPS and Glenn Simpson, same company that put together the phony Trump dossier, but Mueller spent $30 million and never knew this. At Jake Tapper at Anderson Cooper 360. It's long been suspected that the Russian lawyer at the center of the June 2016 Trump Tower meeting was passing along information that originated with the Russian government. That's what the email setting up the meeting promised. But now, the lawyer is telling NBC News, she got much of the information from an American firm, Fusion GPS, the same company that put together the infamous Trump dossier. Fusion GPS founder Glenn Simpson was hired by an American law firm representing one of Natalia Veselnitskaya's Russian clients in 2014. Simpson was asked to dig into businessman William Browder, who played a key role in the Magnitsky Act, a law imposing sanctions against Russians. Glenn Simpson's company, they worked with us on this case. <coughs> We established that the bulk of Mr. Browder's money was being laundered out of Russia into the United States. Browder denies these allegations. In October 2015, Veselnitskaya says she included Simpson's research in a report to the Russian prosecutor general. I was, in effect, the primary source of this information for the Russian prosecutor general's office. They then published the facts that I uncovered. Little bit of uh, noteworthy information that uh, was brought up yesterday to Mueller. Mueller said he didn't know anything about this. He, he wasn't, uh, it was out of his purview. He wanted to back away from it. The thing is, is that I believe Mueller knew all about this and knew that this was going on in the background, attempting to garner more information for the special counsel in order to prove some kind of Russian collusion. All right. Before the meeting, before the Russia, Russia, Russia meeting, this woman uh, had to get into America. She was barred from entering America, and she's also barred from entering the U.K. What happened? An appointed judge by Barack Obama, a Parit Barar, gave her a one-day pass. Here you go. Here's a pass. Come into America. Go to the uh, Donald Trump's uh, Trump Tower and have the, have your meeting and uh, give us our dirt, and we'll then send, send you back out. That's exactly what Parit Barar as soon as Donald Trump took office, he fired that guy, replaced him with a different judge. Now, uh, before she went to the infamous uh, uh, Russia Tower meeting, she actually met with Fusion GPS. She she met with Glenn Simpson and then met with him after the meeting. Isn't this? Uh, come on, man. Glenn Simpson's being paid and bought and paid for by Hillary Clinton. This is the real collusion. This is the real story. And our good friend at Jelly underscore cat is on top of it. She was tweeting out all kinds of great videos. This is certainly a great patriot to follow. Robert Mueller is deep state puppet. He is a dirty cop put on display to push a narrative. Mueller leaked a document. He didn't even write because the narrative was, was not going as the Democrats wanted. Hashtag dirty cop. On March 27, 2019, you wrote a letter to the Attorney General essentially complaining about the media coverage of your report. You wrote, and I quote, the summary letter the department sent to Congress and released to the public late in the afternoon of March 24 did not fully capture the context, nature, and substance of this office work and conclusions. We communicated that concern to the department on the morning of March 25th. There's now public confusion about critical aspects of the result of our investigation. Who wrote that March 27th letter? Well, I, 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 uh... He doesn't even know the letter he supposedly wrote, which 
explains it. He didn't write it. I can't get into who wrote it, uh, the internal deliberation. But you signed it. And I, what I will say is the letter stands for itself. Okay. Why did you write a formal letter since you had already called the Attorney General to express those concerns? I can't get into that internal deliberation. Did you authorize the letters released to the media or was it leaked? I have no knowledge on either. Well, you went nearly two years without a leak. Why was this letter leaked? I, uh, well, I, I, I can't get into it. Was this letter written and leaked for the express purpose of attempting to change the narrative about the conclusions of your report? And was anything in Attorney General Barr's letter referred to as principal conclusions time inaccurate? The time, the time the general lady has expired. The Can you answer the question, passed. please? And the question is? Yes, you may answer the question. Was anything in Attorney General Barr's letter referred to as the principal conclusions letter dated March 24th inaccurate? Well, I am not going to get into that. the narrative about the conclusions of your report and was anything in Attorney General Barr's letter referred to as principal conclusions time the, inaccurate? The time of the general lady has expired. The Can you answer the question, passed. please? And the question is? Yes, you may answer the question. Was anything in Attorney General Barr's letter referred to as the principal conclusions letter dated March 24th inaccurate? Well, I am not going to get into that. So he's not going to get into the letter and whether it was accurate or inaccurate, this is the problem. I don't know what they were thinking by putting uh, uh, Mueller up on this. What were they thinking? Did they really think that this was going to work out? This this could not have gone worse for the Democrat Party. I am thoroughly, I'm just excited. I'm giddy about how bad this went for the Democrat Party. Nothing seems to be working out for them because they're playing uh, for the wrong team. They're, they're, they're fighting to gain back control. Like Lindsey Graham said, uh, you know, I hope you never get that power back. We took that power from you guys with Donald J. Trump's election, uh, Donald Trump's election and taking over, hijacking the GOP. Ron McDaniel and the RNC, phenomenal job. Uh, us helping Donald Trump to hijack the election by re- electing uh, uh, better people and ousting these rhino Republicans. I'm, I'm just saying, guys, this could have gone much, much worse in 2018. 2018, we saw an exodus of mass rhinos uh, with an attempt to help the, the Democrats to overtake the Senate and overtake the House and stop Donald Trump. We saw that with Paul Rhino, Ryan, Jeff Flake, and the rest that uh, couldn't win. We saw the the largest number that I've ever seen of Republicans walking away from office. Uh, we did lose the House, but we are going to get that back 2020. And we're going to have all three houses back. It's going to be a landslide. Uh, I'm just... I'm excited with what the Democrats are doing, and I love putting them on display here. Uh, again, folks, you're watching New Right Network's original series, Smith TV. Your host, Brian Smith. Uh, down in the description below, there's the link for the Patreon button, as well as the PayPal and the Cash Me. Uh, much appreciated for your help and assistance to continue on doing what we do every single day here, Monday through Friday, even if it's a dollar. You know, with, uh, you know, Hundreds of people watching, thousands of people watching. If it's a dollar a person, that will actually help to keep the lights on. And I really, I thank you very much for all that. And this, our good friend at Coco underscore Bean 10. This is a great patriot to follow, tweeting out incredible information. Uh, She says, a lawman under oath knows the consequences of lying under oath, uh, except Comey. Comey doesn't. Mueller refuses to answer if he knew about leaks to the CNN Roger Stone arrest. Mr. Mueller, are you aware of anyone from your team having given advanced knowledge of the raid on Roger Stone's home to any person or the press, including CNN? Well, I'm not going to talk about uh, specifics. Uh, I will mention, uh, but talk for a moment about persons who uh, become uh, involved in an investigation and the understanding that uh, uh, in a lengthy, thorough I- investigation, uh, some persons uh, will be under a cloud that they uh, should not be under a cloud. And yeah. one of the reasons for emphasizing, as I have, the speed of an election, or not an election, the speed of an investigation 
Uh, is that so? Uh, those persons who are disrupted as a result I, I, of the... I, I appreciate that, but I do have a series of questions. I don't, may, uh, uh, with the result of that investigation. Thank you. And you're right. It is a cloud, and it's an unfair cloud for dozens of people. But to my point, are you aware of anyone providing information to the media regarding the raid on Roger Stone's home, including CNN? Uh, I'm not going to speak to that. Okay. Mr. Mueller, you sent a... Uh, yeah, he can't speak to that because he shouldn't. The guy that actually works for CNN that showed up to Roger Stone's house an hour ahead of time actually used to work for the Department of Justice. The deep staters, of course he was tipped off of this raid on Roger Stone's house, and they didn't have anything on Roger Stone, so they had to make the optics look the way they did. This failed on you guys as well with Roger Stone, all the security cameras that he had around his house, uh, praying for Roger Stone's safety and his wife. And th these guys, Don Raid, guns blazing, coming through the back door, coming through the front door. Uh, the operation to arrest Roger Stone must have been in the tens of thousands of dollars. They even had a boat out in the back. Uh, apparently, he lives on the water. They had a, uh, a police boat in the back squad in the front just dozens of men grown i'm big husky men with huge guns roger stone an old guy he's an old grandpa dude and his wife she's deaf what the hell's going on well we know that the deep state has to do exactly what they have to do and uh you know if there's a uh a little bit of bloodshed or uh you know casualties that, that happen well so be it we got to gain our power back. And that's also another reason, Mueller, why things have to be redacted, Democrats, just to let you know. Uh, redactions happen because innocent people get caught up into these things. And if their names aren't redacted, uh, they could be tagged with this for life. I mean, say uh, Jeffrey Epstein, say somebody innocent is uh, uh, caught up or uh, looked at or even questioned. And their name is in the report for Jeffrey Epstein. And at the very end, they weren't a witness, they weren't nothing, and it was all over with? Guys, that person could be ruined for life. That's why that's got to be redacted. And who was colluding with Russia? Well, not only Glenn Simpson, Fusion GPS, uh, and Christopher Steele, and, and all the other counterparts involved, but uh, our own right here, Adam Shifty-Eyed Shift, played a joke on him. This at Coca underscore Bean 10 recording of Adam Schiff welcoming information the Russians have on Trump. Next time Shifty opens his mouth to get Trump, shove this in front of his inspiration for E.T. bulging eyes. And the second part of their best word was uh, it rains again on Brighton Beach. It rains again on Brighton Beach. Yes. On that meeting, Ukupnik told Flynn that uh, all those compromising materials will never be released if uh, Trump will cancel all Russian sanctions. Okay. Um, well, obviously, we would uh, welcome a chance to get copies of those recordings. And the second part of... This by Russian comedians Vladimir and Alexei call U.S. Democrat Representative Adam Schiff as a prank. And this at Representative Chris Stewart, every leak that had occurred from the special counsel's office was designed to weaken or embarrass real Donald Trump every single one. Never was it leaked that there was no evidence of collusion or that Steele dossier was funded by Hillary Clinton's campaign. Think about that. All the leaks were all negative to change the narrative of the story, to, 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 to try Donald Trump in the public court of opinion. That's all it was, and that's what we see every single time. And this great exchange with Representative Turner, now it's about five minutes long, but listen very closely how he absolutely destroys Mueller's report of cannot exonerate President Trump. Mr. Mueller, I have your opening statement, and in the beginning of your opening statement, uh, you indicate that pursuant to Justice Department regulations that you submitted a confidential report to the Attorney General at the conclusion of the investigation. What I'd like you to confirm is the report that you did that is the subject matter of this hearing was to the Attorney General. Yes. Now, you also state in this opening statement that you threw overboard the word collusion because it's not a legal term. You would not conclude because collusion 
was not a legal term. Well, it depends on how you want to use the, the word. In the general parlance, people can think of it that way. But if you're talking about in the criminal uh, statute arena, uh, you can't because uh, some uh, it really uh, uh, it's much more aptly and accurately described as conspiracy. Right. So in your words are it's not a legal term, so you didn't put it in your conclusion, correct? That's what you're That's correct. Statement. Mr. Mueller, I want to talk about your powers and authorities. Now, the Attorney General and the appointment order gave you powers and authorities that are reside in the Attorney General. Now, the Attorney General has no ability to give you powers and authority greater than the powers and, and authority of the Attorney General, correct? No, I don't believe, I, yeah, I think that up. It's correct. <clears throat> Mr. Mueller, I want to focus on one word in your report. It's a second to the last word in the report. It's exonerate. The report states, accordingly, while this report does not conclude that the president committed a crime, it does not exonerate him. Now, in the judiciary hearing, in your prior testimony, you've already agreed with Mr. Radcliffe that exonerate is not a legal term, that there is not a legal test for this. So I have a question for you, Mr. Mueller. Mr. Mueller, <clears throat> does the attorney general have the power or authority to exonerate? Now, what I'm putting up here is the United States Code. This is where the attorney general gets his power and the Constitution, and the annotated ver cases of these, which we've searched. We even went to your law school, because I went to Case Western, but I thought maybe your law school teaches it differently. And we got the criminal law textbook from your law school. Mr. Mueller, nowhere in these, because we had them scanned, is there a process or description on exonerate? There's no office of exoneration at the Attorney General's office. There's no certificate at the bottom of his desk. Mr. Mueller, would you agree with me that the Attorney General does not have the power to exonerate. Uh, I'm going to pass on that. Why? Because it embroils us in a legal discussion, and I'm not prepared to do a legal discussion in that arena. Well, Mr. Mr. Mueller, you would, you would not disagree with me when I say that there is no place that the Attorney General has the power to exonerate, and he's not been given that authority. You would Again, not disagree. I'm not going to. I, I take your question. Great. Well, the one thing that I guess is that the Attorney General probably knows that he can't exonerate either. And, and that's the part that kind of confuses me. Because if the Attorney General doesn't have the power to exonerate, then you don't have the power to exonerate. And I believe he knows he doesn't have the power to exonerate. And so this is the part that I don't understand. If your report is to the Attorney General, and the Attorney General doesn't have the power to exonerate, and he does not, and he knows that you do not have that power, you don't have to tell him that you're not exonerating the President. He knows this already. So then that kind of changed the context I'm, of the report. I, no, we included in the report for exactly that reason. He may not know it, and he should know it. So you believe that the attorney, Bill Barr, believes that somewhere in the hallways of the Department of Justice there's an office of exoneration? No, that's not what I said. Well, I believe he knows, and I don't believe you put that in there for, for Mr. Barr. I think you put that in there for exactly what I'm going to discuss next. And that is, so the Washington Post yesterday, when speaking of your report, the article said Trump could not be exonerated of trying to obstruct the investigation itself. Trump could not be exonerated. Now, that statement is correct, Mr. Mueller, isn't it, in that no one can be exonerated? The reporter wrote this. This, this reporter can't be exonerated. Mr. Mueller, you can't be exonerated. In fact, in our criminal justice system, there is no power or authority to exonerate. Now, this is my concern, Mr. Mueller. This is the headline on all of the news channels while you were testifying today. <clears throat> Mueller, Trump was not exonerated. Now, Mr. Mueller, what you know is that this can't say Mueller exonerated Trump. Because you don't have the power or authority to exonerate Trump. You have no more power to declare him exonerated than you have the power to declare him Anderson Cooper. So the problem that I have here is that since there's no one in the criminal justice system that has that power, the president pardons, he doesn't exonerate. Courts and juries don't declare innocent, they declare not guilty. They don't even declare exoneration. The statement about exoneration is misleading, and it's meaningless, and it, it colors this investigation one word out of the entire portion of your report, and it's a meaningless word that has no legal meaning, and it has colored your entire report. The gentleman has expired. Complete and total propaganda has been right here. Guys, it is total propaganda on display. Mueller using the word on purpose as a dirty lawyer, a dirty cop, a dirty former FBI uh, head. Dirty as his day is long, best friends with Comey. 
here it is, right here. This strikes at the heart. Thank you so much, Representative Turner from the great state of Ohio. No, Ohio was knocking it out of the park yesterday. Uh, Jim Jordan, uh, uh, we had Representative Turner and our own from the west side of Cincinnati, Steve Shabbat, just absolutely going to town. Uh, I was talking with my cousin earlier, and he made the comment about Steve Shabbat and said that maybe it was a little bit kind of dry. I think Steve Shabbat knocked it out of the park for one single reason. The rest of these individuals were doing a great job. There's a lot of emotion, invoking emotion. It's kind of like the good cop, bad cop. And then you have uh, uh, Steve Shabbat stepping up, very calm, very somber, very matter of fact, detailed from day one to to the to, to to today, exactly listing out every single thing that had transpired and happened, and then it was all a sham, all of it a sham. And now uh, uh, Mueller using the word exonerate. I can't exonerate. Of course you can't. You can't. The president can't exonerate. Nobody can. There's. It's a fake, made-up word. And that's what these Democrats do. And you saw that Anderson Cooper trending yesterday. Oh, can't exonerate. Can't exonerate. It's a word game. And that's why you guys come here every single night to find out the real truth. I go digging deep for every single one of you. Um, and we got great patriots here. Our good friend at SurferMom77. Evidently, he didn't read it either. I almost felt pity for the old man who wasn't able to answer questions 198 times. Can't say that. Don't know that. Outside of my purview. So, Mr. Mueller, what have you been doing for the last two and a half years? And where's our $25 million? ABC News. Mueller deflected questions 198 times. It is a shame of what has happened to our country. It is a shame that the Democrats have literally attempted to overthrow a duly elected president. This at Michael I. Johns flashback, hashtag Mueller, then FBI director and under oath knows nothing about FBI's investigation into Tea Party targeting by Obama administration and IRS. Everything I've seen, quoting Mr. Cummings, the case is solved. This is regarding the IRS scandal. Which case... The IRS scandal. The IRS case? Yeah. You know, the IRS case is uh, currently under investigation and uh, basically Start- it's just started. Yeah. What can you tell us? I mean, you started a month ago. What can you, what can you tell us about this? Have you found uh, any, any, have you found the now infamous two rogue agents? Have you discovered who those people are? Uh, I, I needless to say, because it's under investigation, I can't give out anything. Can you tell, can you tell me some bases? Can you tell me how many agents, investigators you've assigned to the case? Uh, May be able to do that, but I'd have to get back to you. Can you tell me who the lead investigator is? Off the top of my head, no. This is the most important issue in front of the country the last six weeks. You don't know who's heading up the case? Who the lead investigator is? Uh, at this juncture, no, I do not know who the Can you get that information to us? We'd like to know. We'd like to know how many people you've assigned to look into this situation. Uh, I have not had a recent briefing on it. I had a briefing on it when we first initiated it, but I have not had a recent briefing as to where we are. So you don't know who's leading the case? I do not know who is the lead agent. Do you know if you've talked to any of the victims? Have you talked to any of the groups who were targeted by their government? Have you met with any of the Tea Party folks since May 14, 2013? I don't know what the status of the interviews are, Bob. Unbelievable. This is the exact Mueller from back in the day when Tea Party uh, people applying for nonprofit status were targeted by Obama's IRS uh, FBI approaching them before the investigation even started. This is the bumbling Keystone Copper Mueller on display once again. Jim Jordan uh, ripping him a new one. Thank you, Mr. Jim Jordan. I appreciate it much. And the media, the fallout of this, they're not happy. The, the fake news media, the CNN, MSNBCs, all of them, they're upset. Uh, here, let's, let's do a run through real quick of everybody that's all upset. <laughs> At Coca underscore Bean 10, you guys chose him. This to David Axelrod. This is uh, delicate to say, but Mueller, whom I deeply respect, has not publicly testified before Congress in at least six years. And he does not appear to be as sharp as he was then. Sorry, David. I just showed you what he was then. He wasn't sharp then either. And this at Steve Guest, NBC's Chuck Todd on the Mueller hearings. Optics on this was a disaster. Provided such, what do you call it, uncomfortable clarity, 
it would it, he as they were using him for clarity, he'd somehow fog it up. But he um, and how he would do certain things, and and so look on optics, this was a disaster. But he directly, but he provided such. And at Chuck Dodd tweets out on substance, Democrats got what they wanted. That Mueller didn't charge President Trump because of the OLC guidance that he could be indicted after he leaves office, among other things. But on optics, this was a disaster. And Carrie Smith, my cousin at Smith Radio, uh, replying to Chuck Todd with a tweet from MAGA at 2020. I want to add one correction to my testimony this morning, Mueller said. I want to go back to the one thing that was said this morning by Mr. Liu, who said, and I quote, you didn't charge the president because of the OLC opinion. That is not the correct way to say it. And this at real Donald Trump, the greatest president we will ever see in our lifetime and generations. <laughs> Even Michael Moore agrees that Democrats and Mueller blew it. <laughs> this in response to Michael Moore's tweet, a frail old man, unable to remember things, stumbling, refusing to answer basic questions. I said it in 2017 that, and Mueller confirmed it today. All you pundits and moderators and lame Democrats who told the public to put their faith in the esteemed Robert Mueller, just STFU from now on. This at real Trump tweets this out of Terry Mor Moran and ABC Politics. That, that question, was the ball advanced? No. Impeachment's over. Uh, I don't think Nancy Pelosi is going to stand <clears throat> for her members, bring forth something that is going to obviously lose in the Senate, lose with the American public. And the problem with, with, with Mueller's testimony on this issue is that he had to carry the ball for them some way, whether he wanted to or not, at least by being a vigorous, strong, rock-solid prosecutor. And he looked... Uh, like uh, somebody who'd slowed a step or two, and perhaps as one of the Repu as the Republicans are starting to put out there, maybe he wasn't even in control of all those angry Democrats. Maybe he's a figurehead, somebody from the past that they put there so they could do their dirty work. That's the the theory they're coming out with. It's not going to be bought by Democrats, but they needed more. Uh, they needed more fuel for any kind of impeachment effort. And this again at real Donald Trump, our great president. The Democrats lost so big today. Their party is in shambles right now. They've got the squad leading their party. They are a mess. Where even you take a look at Scribe and you take a look at so many of the people that were the most outspoken. And they say this was a devastating day for the Democrats. And you know it, John, and everybody else knows it. This was a devastating day for the Democrats. <laughs> Absolutely, Donald Trump, a devastating day. You heard uh, the panel with George Snuffleupagus uh, say, no, no impeachment. Nope, it's not going to be possible. And guess what, guys? Nancy Pelosi announces today, no, impeachment's off the table, but we're going to go after his finances. That's right, guys. The Democrats, we see what they're doing. Their party is in complete shambles. It is falling apart. It is crumbling. Uh, they've got the, the, the four angry elected officials, Rashida Tlaib, uh, AOC, and Ilhan. Uh, I, nothing. Nothing. Racist, hateful, uh, j just fueling. They're actually fueling us. Us to go ahead and get motivated to go out and help campaign. Go out and volunteer for the Trump rally. Trump, Trump's coming to Cincinnati, guys. I will be there. Uh, might be a day where I might not have a show, but I'll definitely be scoping from the event. I'll be talking to people. be walking around uh, when I'm not volunteering, when I'm not uh, uh, involved with the campaign, helping out. I'll do what, everything that I can to show you guys exactly what happened in Cincinnati. So excited about Trump coming to Cincinnati. And again... No impeachment, no there, no obstruction, no co collusion isn't even a word. It's conspiracy, guys. They, they they never use the word conspiracy because that's a legal term, so they use the word collusion. They, uh, they use the word exoneration. Uh, I can't exonerate him because it's not a legal term. Nobody can be exonerated. You're either proven guilty or not guilty, and then that's it. That's done. But they use these words on purpose to gaslight and trick people in order to and now it is completely fall apart it is over you'll probably never hear me talk about russia gate spy gate all you'll probably never hear me talk about it again i'm done guys i am completely done but i will talk about these democrats <laughs>
It's too easy to pounce on them. And this at Jally underscore cat. I do not like this person at Rashida Talib. She is a troublemaker. She's an instigator. She doesn't care that millions of Americans love and appreciate our POTUS. I am so ashamed of the House Democrats and the rhetoric Speaker Pelosi, Leader Hoyer put out and allow from these people. This to Rashida Tlaib's tweet. Want a response to a lawless and complete failure of a president? He is the crisis. His dangerous ideology is the crisis. He needs to be impeached. And this the other one, Ilhan Omar at QAnon Pastry Chef. I guess he makes uh, Q-shaped donuts. Uh, Irrefutable evidence that Ilhan MN is a dangerous, racist, and bigot. Retweet. A lot of conservatives in particular would say that the rise in Islamophobia is a result not of hate, but of fear, a legitimate fear, they say, of quote-unquote jihadist terrorism, whether it's Fort Hood or San Bernardino or the recent truck attack in New York. Uh, What do you say to them? I would say uh, uh, our, our country should be more fearful um, of, of, of white men across our country because they are actually um, causing uh, most of the deaths within this country. We should be uh, profiling, monitoring, um, and, uh, and, and creating policies to fight the radicalization of white men. A lot of conservatives in particular would say that the rise in Islamophobia... White men outnumber... Uh, I mean, our country is made up majority of people are white white men, and as a percentage of that versus the percentage of Muslims and Islam, as a percentage of the black community, the black-on-black crime is through the roof. we got to do something about that. She didn't mention anything about that. Um, Just go straight to the white man, straight racist, straight, just all-out bigotry. This is an elected official. This is what we need to deal with. And again, I'm going to mention Islam. Guys, we will never be able to rid Islam from our country through legislation. It was already once and has been removed by John McCain, by uh, uh, Mitch McConnell, and Joe Biden back in the late 90s. They removed that law that said Islam cannot hold power, hold office in our Congress. Guys, so we will never be able to legislate it. We have to come at it from Christian ideologies and Christian values and show them the way, the truth, and the light, which is Jesus Christ, uh, and and expose them to uh, non-slavery. you got freedom over here. You're being enslaved. This is where freedom is, and this is where paradise will be in the hereafter. That is the only way we're going to beat this. And another way that we you're fighting back the Democrats is exposing the truth and the real news, the real information. Now we have black conservative movement. It is big, guys. There's many different uh, different fractions that are setting up shop and really reaching out, speaking truth to power. And this at BCM America, black conservative movement. Why is it that black children are living in poverty, but Nancy Pelosi stands for illegal aliens? Why don't the Democrats put Americans and black Americans first? Like and retweet if you agree that Americans should come before illegals. Democrats have decimated the black community. Today we are in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, asking people if we should give illegal alien citizenship in this country. They all said yes. When we asked them if we should give black kids who are living in poverty in this country priority over illegal aliens in this country, they said no. Each and every single one of them asked to say no. They said that illegal aliens were living in worse, more dire conditions than young black kids in poverty on the south side of Chicago. Nancy Pelosi stood on her feet for eight hours about illegal aliens. But what about the three million young black kids who are living in poverty in this country? Why hasn't she stood for the 81% of black kids who aren't proficient in reading in Baltimore? Why hasn't she stood for the fact that more black kids are aborted every single day in New York City than born? More kids, more black kids are murdered each and every year than born. Why isn't Nancy Pelosi, why hasn't she stood for them? Why? You know why? Because Democrats don't care about black people living in this country. There it is right there. Also, our good friend Benji Irby that was on the show. We interviewed him. Uh, Link in the description below, down in the show notes. He has been suspended from Twitter. Uh, He's black. He's conservative, and he's outspoken. He's uh, alternative lifestyle, which is cool. We welcome everybody. No big deal. 
uh, has been suspended on Twitter because he spoke out against the Democrat Party. Uh, He posted up a two-minute clip that then led to an 18-minute clip. Both of those clips are in the description as well. And this at Newsbusters, Twitter suspends gay black conservative at Real Benji Irby after video to black Democrats at Chadwick underscore more calls out censors. Yep, there's the suspended account. Okay, let's talk black folks. Yes, I'm Republican, Trump supporter, former Democrat, and I can already hear you calling me all kinds of Uncle Toms and Coons and things, so let's just get that part out of the way. Happy now? Great. And now I know you say because I support Trump, I hate black people, I hate myself, I want to be white, yada, yada, yada. Couldn't be further from the truth. I love being black and I love my black neighborhood. Any neighborhood where I can't run to the corner store and grab a do-rag is not a place where I want to live. I support Trump because I love black people and I love you, even those of you who say terrible things about me. It rolls off my back because I see the bigger picture, which is illegal immigration. There was a time when Democrats like Obama... We all agree on the need to better secure the border and to punish employers who choose to hire illegal immigrants. We're against illegal immigration because it was detrimental to American workers, namely black people. But somewhere along the line, the Democratic Party changed. Raise your hand if you think it should be a civil offense rather than a crime to cross a border without documentation. (laughs) Can we keep the hands up so we could see them? And to add insult to injury, they use the black struggle as a rationale for letting illegals do whatever the hell they want. But the president has gone out of his way. Attorney General Jeff Sessions uh, saying they actually threaten mayors like right. you of sanctuary cities. They're going to cut off certain funding. Well, I think that them targeting sanctuary cities is a way uh, for them to tell mayors and other folks, uh, you know, around the country trying to intimidate us uh, into being what I've called fugitive slave catchers. This legislation calls for the establishment of a commission to study the issue. That is it. It does not call for reparations. It does not call for monetary and compensation. So if reparations ain't about a check, then what the hell is it about? And you notice all this fanfare is only for a mere commission to study reparations. Funny how black folks get commissions to study our stuff but from Democrats, but illegals get direct action. I don't agree with reparations, but off the strength that you do, I think that it's due the respect from the people that you and put in. Because office. of that video and leading to the 18 minute longer version, our good friend, real Benji Irby, is suspended on Twitter. This is the big tech, guys. This is the silencing of our voice. Uh, the Google executive now comes out of the closet. He's out of the shadows. He's been put on administrative leave. And our good friend at James O'Keefe. Another interview, guys out, showing how big tech is biased, exposing them for who they are. This is this is what we're up against, and this is what we're battling. You're watching New Right Network's original series, Smith TV. Your host, Brian Smith, giving you all the breaking news of the day, wrapping it all up, making sense of it, exposing the fake news, giving you the real news, Monday through Friday, 7, 8 p.m. Eastern. Jump down in the description below and hit the Patreon. Go over to smith.tv, become a Patreon. That is the only way we can continue to expose the real news, expose the propaganda, expose the Democrats for who they are, uh, the ones that are running for office. We've got to expose them. We expose the justice Democrats that are running candidates as puppets just to take over the government. We also have Islam running hundreds, if not even thousands of candidates to take over our government and change our way of life fundamentally. We just showed you with the Democrats, Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar, how uh, angry and hateful, bitter they are and wanting to take over our country and put everybody into submission. Islam, socialism, uh, Democrats and communism, all the same thing. All right, guys, crush a share, crush a like for Thursday Thoughts. Uh, I'll see you later. Peace out. (laughs) 
You've been listening to New Right Network, mobilizing, countering, energizing. Online at newrightnetwork.com. <laughs>